excited to be back to a new season of CLF worship, back from our summer reruns and into our new monthly theme of making change, which is an interesting topic for me about which I have a basic question, which is this, is change possible? Is it actually possible to make change? And I ask this as someone who is the veteran of lots of Facebook conversations in which it has proved to be fairly evident that people who believe things in any deep kind of way pretty much do not change their minds. In fact, science backs that experience up. It turns out, unfortunately, that if you believe something strongly, exposure to facts that contradict your opinion just make you believe what you believed to begin with even more strongly. I don't know about you, but I find that extremely disheartening. So can you change people? Can you change people's minds? Can you change people's actions? Uh, pretty dicey. Seems like pretty much the only thing you can change is yourself. And really, if you get down to it, even changing yourself is a little bit on the iffy side. It turns out that our personalities, our temperaments, are pretty much what we come with. And that the events of our lives, tragic or wonderful, don't really tend to have that much effect on how we feel long term. And that how happy you are is mostly not based on doing good things or having good things, but just being somebody who's fairly constitutionally happy. And when you add to that the fact that we are all creatures of culture, creatures of our particular histories. We do things based on what we have learned to do from the people around us, and we carry with us vast clouds of assumptions about how we are in the world that are inextricable from the culture we're born in, how our families operated, and we don't even know that those are things that were delivered to us as a kind of package. Our inherent temperament, the cloud of assumptions around us, it's all of a piece tangled and interwoven. And it seems really, really difficult to change any of it. So much of how we think and consequently so much of how we act comes from purely unconscious biases and assumptions that we can't address because we don't even know that they're there. So what does it mean to talk about making change? How would a person go about making change when everything seems to be designed so that change does not happen? Well, one model to look at might be that of the Jewish High Holy Days. We're about to embark on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which is followed by the 10 days of turning, the days of awe that lead up to Yom Kippur. And the word for turning in those days of turning is tshuva. It's literally turning, making a course correction, as if you were sailing a ship and you just turned the wheel a little bit to line up with the North Star, with whatever your marker is of the direction you want to go. It's about making those small course corrections, those small changes that shift how you're going in the long run really quite a bit. And so during those 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Jews are expected to 
call up the people in their lives who matter and apologize for anything that they've done wrong, to think about their relationships, to think about everything from their work or business dealings to how they have acted with their children or their parents, and to make course corrections. It's a view of change that's really inherently quite different from the Christian understanding of conversion. The Christian mythology is rooted in Saul's conversion experience on the road to Damascus when he sees a blinding light and he hears a divine voice and everything changes and he goes from being someone who is persecuting the nascent Christian group to someone who is a leader, even beyond a supporter. And his name, he changes from Saul to Paul because he is in that moment completely different. And that story of conversion, of having a complete change of heart, of becoming a completely different reborn person is very much part of the Christian mythos. But this Jewish understanding of tshuva, of course correction, isn't that. It isn't becoming a different person. It's just looking where you've been, looking where you want to go, changing the direction so that you're headed just a little bit more in the right way. Somehow that seems a little more doable to me. It's a difference between God coming in and changing your heart, which you have really pretty much no control over, and about looking into your own heart, taking the time to look where you are and making the choice to renew connections, to make things right. Because the understanding is that it's only after you have made that deliberate human choice to fix things, to get into right relationship, that you are then prepared to go in front of God on Yom Kippur and be ready to atone and make things right on that transcendent level. First you do the little pieces with the folks around you, and then God sees what's in your heart because you put it there. It's a different view. Small changes leading to a long-term change of direction. But there's one more thing about that practice of the days of turning that seems realistic to me, something that makes change possible, and that's that it's expected that everyone does it, the entire Jewish community, because the reality is change is hard. Change is not something that comes naturally to us. And so often we're blocked by shame by feeling like we should have been better, that we're going to be judged. And so we hope that if nobody sees what we've done wrong, then it won't matter. But this corporate joint community affirmation of our ability to fix things, to go in a slightly different direction, takes the shame out of the equation. It's just something that we all do and it provides that push to do the things that are hard because we're all just going to buckle down and do it because it's something we all need to do. And that, I think, does make change possible. That faith that we're able to do the hard things, that faith that we can just do a small piece, that it doesn't all have to be fixed at once. That faith that we don't have to be ashamed of who we are in order to take the next step. And so I'm wondering, what might that next step be for you? If you were going to take 10 days of course correction, what might you fix? 
who might you call? Might you find one way to live more lightly on this earth? One small way to care for our precious planet? Might you find one way to try to step outside the structures of oppression, racism, ableism, sexism, homophobia? What way might you look at those things that are so often unexamined about how the world is, how it has to be? What course correction might you make toward more justice, more peace? What conversation might you have that would be just a bit more authentic, honest, loving? What possibilities can you imagine if you just took a step in a slightly new direction and then just kept going?